Welcome back to CS201 Walkthroughs. My name is Luke Kosh, and today we're going to be talking about lists and list functions. So in, in Racket, whenever you want to keep track of multiple things at once, which is pretty frequently, generally we're going to use a list for that. Um, so if I want to keep track of, I don't know, a list of the height of every person in this class, then maybe I would have a list of heights. You know, and in inches, 62, 49, 53, whatever. Um, and there are a number of functions that go along with these lists that are important to know, to be familiar with, uh, and to be able to use fluently both in both in the homeworks and on tests, uh, which in these tests you'll be coding on paper or you'll be writing out your code with a pencil or pen or whatever. Um, so it's important to kind of know how to use these. So I'm just going to run through their inputs, their outputs, and how they work, and maybe a little bit about what they're useful for. So list is a function itself, which takes in any uh, any number of any type of argument, or any, any data type. Type of argument. arguments. And it outputs a list with those arguments as elements in the list in the same order, same order they were passed to the function. So let me show you what I mean. If I run list on, well first what happens if I run list on nothing? Okay, I get a list with nothing inside of it. If I run list on, so I said any types of arguments, well, that's probably not entirely true, or any data types. So I can have, let's see, I'll put a boolean in there, I'll put a number, I'll put a string, I'll put a symbol, and it outputs a list with those things in the order, the same order I pass them to this function. Okay, that's pretty easy. So here, let's write down our example. Take my example and I'll put it up here. Oops, forgot how to copy paste. There we go. Car is the same as first. Both of these functions take in a list with at least one element. You cannot run car or first on an empty list. If I try, contract violation basically means you gave me something I didn't like, you didn't give me what I wanted, expected a pair, which is another sort of word for list, got an empty list. This is not, this is not a pair, this is not good. Um, so with at least one element, and then it outputs, outputs, the first, el first element of that list. Okay, so let's come up with an example. Let's take the car of that list we generated earlier. This list up here. What should we get? Well, we should get the first element. These in the, the elements are indexed by 1, 2, 3, 4, so in, uh, not starting at 0. Take the car, I should get that first element, which was false. The boolean false. Perfect. I can show you that that works the exact same as first, just for fun, in case you don't believe me. Go back down here, I'll run first on this list up here. Oh no. Attempt number two. First on this list, I get the same thing. Alright, there's some variations on car, or some ways to kind of extend car. If I put it with two A's, this takes the car of the car. If I put it with three A's, this takes car of the car of the car. So it's important to note is that if I'm taking something like this, the car, the car of the car, then the first element of my input list 
has to be a list with an element in it because car takes a list with exact with at least one element. For example, if I'm taking here, you know, we'll write it out. If I take the car of the car of this list, that's not going to work because the first car will return one. The second car will try to run on the number one, which is not a list with ex at least one element. And contract violation given one, that's no good. Similarly, if I run car on this, car r, no good. I would need to run something like, when I put another list inside my list, and here I would get, well, the car of the car, the first element of the first element is a one. Or it's, I guess it's this quote. Let me try again. Car of this list, the list inside does not need an apostrophe, I'm rusty in my racket. There we go. All right. Coder is the rest of the list. So it takes in a list. We can check whether it needs to be, needs to have any elements. Oh, I guess it does. So an empty list doesn't work with at least one element. And it outputs. In this case, it's not going to take just the elements in the rest of the list. It's going to output another list without the first element of the input list. So I'll show you an example. Cutter of 1, 2, 3, 4. It'll return another list with just 2, 3, 4 in it. This will be our example for cutter. Similarly to car, there are some extensions of cutter. There is cutter, which is the cutter of the cutter. You can go, you can keep going for a while. I'm not sure exactly how long, but there's the cutter, which is the cutter of the cutter of the cutter. So if I do something like cutter of one, two, three, four, I'll get four in a list because it'll remove the first element, and then the second, and then the third, and then it'll just give me four. You can also combine car and cutter. You can combine car and cutter, and do something like, like the catter, which I think is the car of the cutter. We can see it's the catter of one, two, three. Well, if it's taking the car, yeah, let's see. So it cutters first, and then it takes the car of that cutters, removes the one, gets the list two, three, and then takes the first of that list. But we won't worry about this too much right now. Last is pretty simple. Takes in a list, outputs the last element. Let's come up with an easy example. I'll take the last of a list one, two, three. Gives me three. Completely forgotten how to copy paste. There we go. Reverse takes in a list, as you might expect, outputs a list with the elements in the reverse order. This is it's getting almost too intuitive to the point where it's monotonous, isn't it? it takes in one, two, three, it'll output three, two, one. I bet you could have predicted that. Take that up here, put it as our example. All right, cons it takes uh, a list as its second argument. So we'll say we'll say it takes two arguments first. First argument is something to put in a list and second is a list to put something in Oops. something returns a list with the first argument in the second argument a list I'll show you an example well cons the number one onto the list two three and we get 
voila, one, two, three. Maybe it's important to note, returns a list with the first argument as the first element in the second argument, which is a list. Here's our example. Put it up there. If you want to get really meta, you could do something like cons a list into a list. So what if I did cons the list one, two, oops, one, two, into the list three, four, and I get one, two as a list which is the first element of this long this this outside list that has three four as its second and third element. All right, append takes two lists and mashes them together. So outputs the two lists as one list with the elements in the same order they're input in. And the outer list of the two input lists is removed. I'm not sure how to explain that best. Um, maybe I'll just show you. So if I append, say, 1, 2, 3, 4, and list 5, 6, 7, these outer lists get removed and kind of replaced with a new list. So there's only one list in the end. They don't get, you do not get list 1, 2, 3, 4, list 5, 6, 7. Instead, you just get list one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think mashes them together is, is the is a good way to put that. Take this up and put it as our example. Alright, map. This one's a little tough to use sometimes, but it's also immensely powerful. Um, it takes in a function and a list and applies that function or let's let me say takes in a procedure and a list and applies that procedure to every element of the list so let's come up with an example I guess the output I should say is a list with the function or the procedure applied to every element of the list. So for an example, let's ask if let's map the function or the procedure or the function string question mark, which we know tests whether something is a string, onto the following list. One, two, three, hello, four, five, goodbye. And that's our list. So I should get false, 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 true, false, false, true. Right? Perfect, there we go. Alright. Uh, something that's a little bit tricky about using map is sometimes you want to do a function that takes more than one argument. So say I want to add one to every element of a list. I have to use something called a la lambda function. If I want to use a function with two arguments, then need to use a lambda. I think we'll worry about that a little bit later. Maybe I'll show you a quick example. So I'll say map lambda. I'm not going to go over this too in depth right now. I think we'll run into it later. Plus x plus 1 to x. And then I'll map that onto the list 1, 2, 3. There we go. So it adds 1 to every element. Ah, uh, this is an example. Lambdas are, are helpful for defining functions quickly in maps. Um, you definitely want to use them later, but we're not going to worry about them right now. Length takes in a list. If you want, you can make a wild guess at what it, out guess at what it outputs. Puts an integer representing the number of elements in your list. It's almost like I don't need to run an example for this, but we will, just for fun. Length of 1, 2, 3 is 1, 2, 3 elements. There we go. Told you it was going to be fun. Empty is an important function for, uh, for recursion. So often if we're kind of working our way through a list, 
say we want to like count the elements of a list. Well, how do we know when we're done in our recursion? Well, it's when the list is empty because we'll keep kind of working our way and removing elements from it. So empty takes in a list, uh, returns true if the list is empty, returns false if the list is not empty. It's pretty easy. Empty, empty list. Uh oh. Oh, I did empty wrong. Empty with a question mark. Empty, empty list. True. Empty, a non empty list. Not true. The reason that this threw an error is because empty on its own represents the empty list. So I can't try to use that as a function. It's going to say that's not a procedure. All right, so let's copy our examples up there. I hope you now have a, a better understanding of some of the basic list functions in Racket. So it will help you a lot on homework one. Um, and they'll help you a lot in understanding how to do recursion on lists, which will be very important in homework one. If you have any questions on any of this, we encourage you to come into office hours, email the CS201 help email, or post on the Piazza. Thanks for watching this help video, or this walkthrough video, help video, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.